Welcome to Willer in Training Boat Handling Tutorial Series. This series of videos is not a substitute for hands-on tuition, but will give you an introduction to the techniques used on a boat handling training course. In this video, we're going to look at what's called steaming on a spring and then reversing away from a mooring and ascending a lock. So here I am now, moored up on the lock landing. My crew member is just lifting the paddle on the lock just ahead of us. Uh, what I'm doing here is a method called steaming on a spring. I've taken the centre line to a bollard and taken a couple of turns around the bollard and I'm holding on to the loose end of the line. At the same time I've got it in forward gear. So that's pushing the boat forward but the effect of the centre line being tied off means the boat is held in against the side. If you look now at the uh, the wash started to come from the tail of the lock as, it, as my crew member opens the paddle even more. Without this then there's a risk that I'll be swept backwards uh, or even in fact lose control and be swung across the canal. We try not to do this for too long because you are creating wash behind the boat and uh, eventually you, you may well damage the bank. In this area here this is concrete piling so we're pretty sure it's, uh, it's not going to be affected by what we're doing. Once we can see that the, the wash is reduced, we've uh, selected neutral gear and uh, now I can take the centre line off the bollard with a couple of flicks. Mm, need a better one than that though. And the second one just to bring the rest of the line round. There we go. And then bring the line, tidy it up and put it back on the roof ready for use. So the crew members lifted the paddle fully. He's now uh, resting on the uh, on the gate, and when the pressure has come off the gate, he'll be able to swing the gate open to allow me in. But I've got time now to reverse away from the mooring. Once we've done, select to reverse gear, and uh, to bring the propeller into deeper water, ready for the wash that's going down the port side of the boat, the left-hand side, to push the bow out, and at the same time into forward gear then to steer the bow away from the side. If I've got this timing just right, then by the time I get there, that gate will be open. Slightly controversial is whether you open both gates. Um, it, uh, on a day like today where there isn't any wind, and I can be pretty sure of accurate steering, then I'm not going to do it. But if there was any doubt, a slightly windier day, then I'd make my crew member walk around the lock and open the other gate, even if it was only half a metre or so, to give me that extra bit of room. And as if by magic, as I get close to the lock, the gate swings open for me and I can very gently bring the boat into the lock itself. Tick over speed is plenty fast enough for this activity. See my crew member now is, is lowering the paddle and we lower the paddles, we never let them go. And uh, we finish with that now. Once the gate's open, there's no need for the paddle to still be open. And he wouldn't have anything else to do anyway, so it's a good time to get it out of the way, and less chance it will be forgotten. I'm the only boat that's coming into the lock, but all the same I'm going to pass my centre line up to my crew member, who will take the line round the back of a bollard and then bring the loose end back to me. This will help me to be more stable in the lock once it starts to fill. Equally, if another boat was joining me on my right hand side, the starboard side of my boat, then uh, I want to keep the boat right in tight so that uh, he can come in safely. With the gate behind me now firmly closed, the crew member now has moved forward with his windlass and is ready to lift the paddle. Before he does that, he will just check back with me, make sure I'm happy that it's safe, and I'll give him the thumbs up to say go ahead. He'll open the paddle very slowly, and uh, just so that the wash doesn't push me around in the lock. Being a, a Grand Union lock, we're opening the paddle that's on the same side as the boat. It, this can vary, of course, and does vary with different locks.
my crew member will be checking the wash and checking the effect that the wash has on the boat and once he's happy he'll open the paddle gear a little bit more but all the time he and I are both watching each other to make sure that we're both happy with the operation. You can see the force of the water there on the right hand side that uh, could push me around had, uh, had I not got the centre line around the back of the bollard. Once the lock is full then the, we can release the centre line, the crew member can open the gate. Once again we're opening a single gate. I'm happy enough today that I've got complete control of the boat and can get out without touching the other one. But if there was any doubt whatsoever I get the crew member to walk all the way around and open that gate a little bit more. The crew member there now is lowering the paddle. Uh, again we don't drop the paddle gear, we lower it carefully and controlled. And uh, he's doing it now and so that uh, it's not forgotten once we come out of the lock. As with any lock, when you leave, all the paddles and all the gates should be closed behind you. The intention here is to pick up my crew member just beyond the lock, but uh, I need to give him time to close the gate behind me. So using reverse gear now just to slow the boat right down and we'll pick him up just here at the head of the lock. Nothing wrong with moving on to the lock landing but it's uh, it's quicker doing it this way. All we'll need to make sure is that the crew member doesn't attempt to get on the boat whilst I'm in gear, especially reverse gear. If he was to fall in the water then there's a risk he could be dragged into the propeller. Crew members close the gate now, joining us on board and it's just now a matter of selecting forward gear and there you have it waiting to enter a lock, steaming on a spring and ascending a lock <laughs>